alongside uh, Dave Mitchell, and uh, in our studios here today, we have our very special guests, Phil Vischer and uh, Mike Naraki, both involved in the production of uh, Veggie Tales. Phil has uh, gone on to uh, develop a company called uh, Jellyfish Labs. Uh, they have a new product out called Why Do We Call It Christmas? And uh, he is going to be on with uh, Sean Hannity uh, tomorrow night. That is correct. Yeah. What, At 6 p.m., I hear. 6 p.m., yeah. And I believe it's WLS. Okay. Like, again, we normally don't turn people away from Moody, but... Right. Uh, you can that, turn away if you turn right back when I'm done talking. <laughs> yes, it's, it's kind of that way if you want to be moody friendly uh, yes. to us for the rest of life. And uh, Mike, meanwhile, is not going to be on WLS, but you have a new product out called... The Little Drummer Boy. Ah, yes. And this is the newest DVD from uh, Veggie Tales. Well, so we have both you guys. When was the last time you sat across from a table like this? I think maybe ICRS. It was. It was very unplanned. I was doing. Yes, a, I was doing right. an interview, and then Phil snuck up behind me and jumped on another microphone. I was <laughs> so. walking down the hall and uh, saw Mike being Larry on the radio, yeah. and, and thought I should crash his party. <laughs> so this was at the Christian Booksellers <laughs> yes, Convention. Yes, that's Christian right. Booksellers yeah. Convention. Yeah. All right. Very good. Well, it, when when you were doing uh, your characters together, I mean. We know that uh, people who don't like actors on stage throw vegetables. What did you guys throw at each other? So, uh, quips, <laughs> mostly. Just whoever had the the quickest mind at the time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, did you did you enjoy each other apart from Veggie Tales work? No, we always hated each other. <laughs> I it was a, a deep, well, I mean, you know, seated long. <laughs> you could only go so far sometimes <laughs> in business. Well, we were roommates when it when I first started kicking around on the idea. We, yeah, we were roommates. You know, and starting doing puppets in college together. Yeah. You know, Way back in eighty four during World 84. War Two, <laughs> yeah, yeah nineteen eighty four, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we were in the Marine Puppet Corps <laughs> together. We we helped uh, defeat the Japanese. <laughs> yeah. Now, Mike, when he was uh, talking about this idea, did it immediately germinate with you, or did you have to think so a while? So to speak, like, germinate? Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. You know, I, I remember the first time I realized, you know what, this, uh, I, I could see this really working. I remember uh, Phil had... It was about a year ago. <laughs> yeah, it was about a year ago. It suddenly dawned on me. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> but I uh, have to do medical school after all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was actually, uh, Phil plucked me out of medical school to do this. But, um, no, I hadn't gotten there yet. I was pre-med. It's a parallel. So, career, I yeah, exactly. But um, uh, I remember we were we were renting space at the Sun Times building at the time, which I, I believe is no longer there. Yes, it's uh, gone. Yeah, and uh, you had modeled Trump Tower. Yeah, <laughs> you had modeled what became uh, eventually Junior Asparagus's bedroom uh, on the computer and had lit it. And I just remember sitting there looking at it, just thinking, wow, this is just so fascinating to look at because computer animation was just so new. And uh, just looking at that image and imagining a story taking place in that world uh, was really exciting to me. And I, and I thought, wow, you know, this could really work. It just might work. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So are you more yeah. of the techie in this whole thing? Yeah, I was, I was the computer guy. I was the computer animator. I mean, he was doing audio and video editing at the time. We were working together in video production. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, which I kind of pulled him into as a way to pay for pre-med <laughs> initially. Right. Uh, and so when we started working on the first Veggie, he wasn't an animator, so I hired two guys. One guy from the Art Institute of Chicago mm -hmm. named Robert Ellis. Another guy named Chris Olson from the University of Illinois, who just graduated with a lot of computer experience. So they came in, and we did the animation. Uh, Mike kept his day job, because I didn't have any money to pay him, so he was working at a video production house and came in at night to do the audio work uh, and, and kind of help in any way and could. editorial and yeah yeah, yeah that's right. so, so where'd you get the money to pay the animators if you didn't have money to pay him Are you hiding out on him there <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't bring that up uh, no, it was actually, I, I didn't have any money to do it at all. Uh, and, and I tried to pitch Christian publishing companies, yeah. and they just didn't give me the time of day. And I was in a small group in our church. I'd just gotten married. My wife and I were in a new small group, a married small group. And another couple in the small group who were praying with us for about two years while I was trying to raise the money finally said, you know, what you're trying to do is too important to let it not happen. Uh -huh. And they wrote me a check for $80,000 out of their retirement fund. Yeah. And that started Veggie Tales. And that's something. Well, we're going to continue this discussion here in just a moment on Moody Radio Chicago. Uh, Dave was asking me a little bit uh, earlier, Dave Mitchell, uh, why not uh, Mark and Dave? Why did you choose, you know, Bob and Larry? <laughs> well, so. I think the obvious thing, you know, because I made Larry first. Larry came first, okay. but he was alone and it was not good. <laughs> I see. <laughs> so, you know, and like Mike said you know, earlier, he was tall and skinny. So I thought, okay, let's do complementary shapes. And why not complementary colors? Oh, it would be a tomato. And so the obvious thing in the world of cartooniness would be, you know, Tommy the tomato and Kooky the cucumber. Mm -hmm. And I thought, yeah, that the alliterative is just, was too yeah, that cheesy. is just not what I want to do. So I, think, I want regular names, just regular Joe names. My stepdad's name was Bob, and he was a well and pump man. 
So he had these blue work shirts with Bob embroidered. <laughs> you know, I just thought, that is just so regular. Right. You know? So, okay, it's Bob the tomato, and what's another... And I, I actually have a piece of paper with a list of very regular Joe names on it. Yeah. And Larry is circled for the cucumber. I see. So it just... It was... They were, you know, and, like... And, and tomatoes and cucumbers are the most common vegetables as well. So, you know, just very regular types of vegetables with very regular names. Yeah. But you don't have anything against corn. No, I, I have a no. great deal Some against... Some of my best friend are, corn. friends are corn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, corn, yeah. corn, I couldn't make corn. It had too m- much geometry to yeah. it. <laughs> corn yeah. on the cob. Now, if you do just one, you know, you could do just one, like but Bob kernel. and Larry could step on it. But, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, going back to your World War II thing, you could have had kernel corn. So, yeah. uh, anyway, <laughs> let's go on to the... Uh, well, we do have a rock band of corn yeah. named Shucks. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, Shucks. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, so how about the personalities of these? I mean, do you, do you have to kind of think in your mind what kind of personality would uh, this uh, cucumber have? Well, I think the, the yes. personalities came <laughs> quite organically. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, this is just full of vegetable puns, isn't it? Uh-huh. Organically. Organically, yes. yeah. but, but, you know, uh-huh. Phil and I had uh, done puppets together for years. Before and, we got kicked out of Bible college. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so we, uh, we actually, you know, just had, had that rapport of the, the, the puppet characters that we did. And with Bob and Larry, we wanted to kind of have them as extensions of our own personalities and our own friendship. So there's a lot of Larry that, you know, is, is a lot of me and a lot of Bob that's Phil. And right. so as the characters spoke to each other, we were kind of drawing on that, on, on, our, on the way that we related as friends to how Bob and Larry spoke to each other. So okay. it was easy to see how they would communicate. Okay, so now from both of uh, you, not at the same time, what kind of women would marry you? I mean, I just uh, what was your what was your wife looking looking for here? Thinking about that, uh, Mike. Why don't you go first? Wow, what kind of women? You know, I met my wife Lisa actually the very year we came out with the very first show. Okay, uh, and um, you know, she had she was actually finishing up her master's degree so in education. She's a teacher, and uh, she would come to uh, veggie. She would come to the small office that we office space that we were running out. I came in at night after my, my day job, and she would study. Uh, she was finishing up some thing that she was doing at school, and, and I would work on Veggie Tales. And it was very, you know, she had really no idea what it was. Just like, okay, well, I like you, and you're working on these vegetable things. That's that's, <laughs> that's really nice. But I want you to be a doctor. That's what I really want you to do. Yeah, yes, but, your uh, online profile said you were in pre-med. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, um, you know, my, she's a native Spanish speaker, and I remember those early years, the tenants above our space that we, we uh, rented uh, were, were Spanish-speaking, and uh, so she was able to help us out in those early years because we actually, yeah. there, was, there, there, was, there was food that used to fall through the floorboards. Uh, we, because it, it's a funny yeah. story. Okay, we're in an apartment where it's in a building with the second floor, the north side of Chicago. The second floor is all apartments. No one speaks English on the second floor, all Spanish. The landlord only speaks Korean. Uh, our tiny little office is in between a Spanish grocery store and a comic book shop. Can they hear you doing these characters? Because they must have thought you were I the weirdest people we, we on the planet. We could certainly hear the video games. Oh, my goodness. Because it was yeah. like all hours of the night, yeah. bleep, 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 <laughs> while we're animating. So we noticed that there was a hole in the ceiling. Had no idea what it was about until I was sitting there with one of the animators. I think it was Chris Olson and I were sitting there one night, about 11 o'clock at night, and we hear something fall on the floor. And we look over, and it's a half-eaten taco. <laughs> <laughs> and my first thought was, it's manna from heaven. Right. <laughs> you know, my second thought was, Half eaten manna. is God Mexican? <laughs> you know, but I mean, that's, that was what it was, you know, you hear the garage band stories. It was, it was lit. So then one day they, they apparently were cleaning up upstairs and poured a, a bucket of mop water down the hole and it landed on my desk. You know, and that was the point where we had to have uh, Mike's wife, Lisa, translate into Spanish no mas agua in the hole. <laughs> right. <laughs> and and they go pass it upstairs. Is that when you yeah. came up with Noah's umbrella, too, at the same time? <laughs> oh, right, yes. Right. The same time, uh, 10 years later. <laughs> right. Okay, uh, very good. Now, how about your wife? My wife is also named Lisa. Uh-huh. And we met at my great-grandfather's Bible conference in northwest Iowa when she sat down in the pew in front of me. Her head hit my knee that was propped up on the pew, and she turned around and said something sarcastic. And I thought, oh, sarc- sarcastic girls at Bible conferences, that's unusual. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
AKA that's promising. <laughs> so, uh, so we sat on the dock. This was by Lake Okaboji in, in Northwest Iowa. We sat on the dock and we were making up songs together. I thought, she is really fun. So she's Junior Asparagus. Uh, she co-wrote the VeggieTales theme song with Mike. She co-wrote the What Have We Learned song with me while we were right, driving to church one morning. Ah. So she was kind of very instrumental in the first couple of years. Interesting. Well, I'm glad you said uh, you were there by the lake making up rather than making out, because this is Moody Radio. It's <laughs> 849. Uh, we'll continue our discussion here and get some listener questions for uh, Bob and Larry coming up in just a moment. <laughs> and our special guests, Phil Vischer, Mike Naraki. You would know them from uh, VeggieTales, the uh, co-creators, and also Phil's got a new company, uh, Jellyfish Labs, and we've been airing uh, a lot of his segments this past year, uh, Sunday School Lady, where uh, hopefully your kids have learned uh, something more about the Bible. I know I have just by enjoying his uh, fun and his uh, silliness, so uh, thanks for that. And as I uh, mentioned, Mike, my, uh, my grandkids uh, are enjoying uh, all the new VeggieTales things in our, in our band as uh, we take them places, so we appreciate your creativity as well. John Gager, you've got someone who wants to ask a question. And her name is Mackenzie. Go ahead for Phil and Mike. Hello. How did you come up with the storyline? Which one? <laughs> the first one? Uh, yes. The first one was uh, Where's God When I'm Scared? And I think it was me trying to raise money. <laughs> <laughs> Help! Uh, no, I was, I was kind of looking for you know, the very first basic questions that you could answer for a kid and thinking about, okay, you're scared at night in your bed. What, you know, that's pretty fundamental. Because your, your daughter Shelby was actually going through that at the time, I she, remember. She was, she, yeah, she was like two. My daughter yeah. was two. Um, and so just looking at some of the other kids' videos out and how you could answer basic questions for kids in a fun but musical way, uh, that seemed like a good place to start. That's very good. All right, Julie, who's got the next question and for whom? Uh, well, I have a brother and sister here from Mundelein, Timothy and Melody. Melody, why don't you go first? Mr. Phil Vischer, how do you sound like Buck Denver? <laughs> <laughs> I tend to base my characters on other people I've heard. So, hi there, this is Buck Denver. How are you today? He is uh, kind of inspired by Ted Baxter, if you're over the age of 40. Mm -hmm. uh, mi mixed with a little Stephen Colbert, if you're under the age of 40. <laughs> uh, but the newsman who isn't quite as smart as he hopes he is, is uh, that's Buck Denver. All right. And Timothy, your question. Can you talk like Clive and Ian? <laughs> um, Clive and Ian are two British brothers and they're archaeologists. This is Clive. Hello, Clive, and my brother Ian. Hello, this is Ian, and we're adventuring to find where the Bible was written. And I think the book of Philemon was written in this Starbucks. Um, no, Clive, there was no Starbucks there when the Philemon <laughs> was written. Oh, all right, thank you. <laughs> all right. Uh, John. We're here with Christine, who has a question for both Phil and Mike. Well, speaking of your first uh, video, you know, with the classic, uh, God is Bigger Than the Boogeyman, um, and I Love My Lips, the Buffalo Song, you know, all those. Like, where, what's your musical background for all this great music? <laughs> well, none, really. Juilliard. <laughs> yeah. Mike was at Juilliard. <laughs> We, <laughs> Julienne, Ju it was actually with, for vegetables. It was the Julie's Julie yard, wasn't it? Was in... <laughs> but actually, we're very fortunate uh, to have worked with a man named Kurt Heineke all these years. Kurt was actually, uh, or was the, the director of music at the church we attended at the time, Park Community Church in downtown Chicago. And, uh, oh, thanks for the microphone. And uh, <laughs> Kurt uh, just is a musical genius. And so uh, I know for me, you know, Phil's a little bit, you at least play the guitar. I started to play the guitar when I was younger and then gave it up. But, <laughs> for medical um, school. <laughs> that's right. But I, you know, I, I'm a lyricist, so I'll write lyrics with a melody in mind, and then I'll take it to Kurt and just say, hey, Kurt, can you turn this into a real song? And he's been doing that for yeah. us all these years. And, and I write melodies, but I don't, I don't know chords. So I would hum my melodies to Kurt, and now I've, you know, there's another guy named Chris Davis who worked on VeggieTales, who's now producing all the music for What's in the Bible. And so I'll hum, I'll, I'll record them on my iPhone, literally, and email them to someone to say, turn this into a song! <laughs> Stat! <laughs> yeah. And they do! And they well, do! They come well, back and I think, wow, I'm brilliant! <laughs> <laughs> And the great thing, too, is it, it really kind of builds on it itself because, you know, with Kurt, I'll pitch him an idea, 
and you know he'll come back with a musical idea, which it will then spur uh, you know a different lyrical idea, and then the, the songs will take shape like that. So it's really a great process. Highly later, collaborative. Later yep. today, uh, we're going to have a, a lunch session, and uh, we've asked uh, Mike to stick around in town today because we only have him in town for one day, and he's going to talk a little bit about that creative process. Maybe we'll get to hear a little bit more about that. So, mm-hmm. well, uh, we're going to uh, get an update from our morning team, and then continue our conversation here with uh, Phil Vischer and Mike Naraki in just a moment. Oh. Have to hurry along here, got about three minutes left in our broadcast, but uh, Julie, who has another? Another question for our guests, uh, Phil and Mike. I have my girlfriend, Ellen's son, Matthew, from Mundelein. And Matthew, you have a question for Phil Vischer? Yeah. How many different people uh, do voices, and how do you decide who does them? Ooh. Well, with VeggieTales, uh, we didn't know anyone else who did voices. So <laughs> at the beginning, we just did all of them. Um, and then eventually, we kind of ran out. And we also figured that neither of us could do women very well. So we especially needed to find women who could do voices. Yeah, Madam Blueberry, I think, was maybe yep. one of our first. Yep. Yeah. Madam Blueberry. Oh, no, not working. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. we need. Do they have any real women? Where do we find real women? Um, and with uh, with what's in the Bible, I just I'm doing all the puppets, so I'm just doing them all because I'm crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, bless your heart for it. Okay, so John, good. how about it? Uh, one last quick one here. Virginia is nine. She's from Elgin, and she has a question for Phil. How did you come up with using vegetables for characters? <laughs> uh, I first tried a candy bar. Uh, I animated a candy bar character, and I just got married, and my wife walked by and saw it on the computer and said, you know, moms are going to be mad at you if you make your kids fall in love with candy bars. <laughs> and I thought, good heavens, she's right. Uh, what would moms not be mad about their kids falling in love with? And the next thing that popped into my head was a cucumber. And I made a cucumber shape, took the face off the candy bar, put them on the cucumber, and Larry the Cucumber was born. And there you have it. All right. Well, I have one more question uh, for Mike. We only have about a minute, and uh, this may be hard for you to do, but, uh, you know, you went through that very difficult season with the VeggieTales company. Mm -hmm. And so now, uh, you know, uh, Phil steps out, but he talked about how his life changed and how God had something to say to him in that season. How about for you? You know, I think it was very similar for me just in terms of um, what uh, VeggieTales had meant to me. Um, and for, for me, it, it, it had come to mean security. Um, and just, I think, uh, you know, I knew that it was, it was successful. I knew it was going well. I, at the time, okay, well, I don't have to worry about, you know, how I'm going to send my kids to college or paying the mortgage. Um, and then when it all ended... Suddenly, it, I, I learned that it was, it was all just dust, you mm-hmm. know, and, and where should my security actually lie, and, in, and that is in God alone. Um, and so just, just refocusing that, it's in, in you, can't, you can't put your, your faith and your trust in things of this world, but, but only in God, and, and that, was, that was my big lesson out of, out of the Do you have turmoil. a new sense of freedom, doing what you're doing? Still doing it, but you're doing it yeah, differently. Yeah, absolutely, and just to know that, you know, it's not, it's not my own ability. It's not what I try hard to do. You yeah. know, God, God has allowed us to continue despite, you know, all, all the opportunities there were to, to mess things up. And it's, it's, he's in charge, and, and I can just rest in knowing that, you know, I'm, I'm, God is in control. I remember during, during the bankruptcy, uh, Twyla Paris sings a song called God is in Control. I remember mm-hmm. that coming on the radio and yeah. just sitting in my car and crying and just thinking, yes, you know, that is, that, that's all I can rest on. Well, you've uh, delighted thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of uh, kids with these productions, and uh, may they continue both with Sunday School Lady and all your work doing, Phil. And, Thank you uh, very much. Thanks for coming over and having some fun with us today. You've uh, made our people here very, very happy. So. You're very welcome. Mike Naraki, thank you as well. And God bless you. I want to say thanks also to Chris uh, Seagard for uh, engineering for us today, Tim Svoboda for all the work uh, you did behind the scenes, John Gager, Julie Royce for coming out and being a part of our morning ride uh, as well today. Thank you very, very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. See you later. <laughs> Do remember this good day is a gift from God. Let's live like we believe it. Mm-hmm.